Hey, what's up? So you want to know how well your products will do tomorrow or even three months from now or even six months from now, but you don't know how to forecast sales or find the seasonality of their product. By the end of this video, I will share with you how to forecast sales for your potential product so that you know whether or not you want to move forward with this product and you will know how many units you will need to order. If you're new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. In my channel, I share my very own Amazon FBA journey. Also, Amazon FBA and personal development tips. So if you like to follow my journey, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified for when I release a new video every week. Hey, I'm Robbie. I'm a six figure Amazon FBA seller that started selling eight months ago. And when I was in your shoes, I was really confused on how to forecast sales and how to find that seasonality for my potential products. And now that I have that knowledge, I want to pass that knowledge down onto you. And now it's your turn to learn how to forecast your sales. So the first thing I want to go over with you is the types of seasonalities of the products that you want to sell on Amazon FBA. So one is an evergreen product. That's something like a cup where customers buy all year round where the sales are pretty steady, pretty flat throughout the year. Second thing is a seasonal product, something like a winter jacket or even a jacket in general where sales are pretty much higher during one season, like three months or so versus the other three seasons in the year. And the third kind of seasonality is a very seasonal product, which is something like a Valentine's gift where sales are really high for 14 days and throughout the rest of the year, there are no sales at all. So the difficulty for an evergreen product, this is best for beginners because you don't have to really know that much strategy in order to know how many sales are going to happen, how many you know units you're going to order in cash flow because it's pretty steady throughout the year. Seasonal products, however, is a lot harder to manage your cash flow and inventory. And you need to know how to adjust current sales on the Google Trends to meet the seasonality of that product. And this is just a better, um, this is also just better to get into when you are, are an experienced seller. So I would just stick to evergreen products. All right. So how do we check the seasonality of these potential products that I was talking about? So let's say the first product that we wanted to do is a cup. Let's just see how that seasonality is. So when you're looking at seasonality of products, you want to set this to the market that you are going to be selling at. So United States, and you want to put this to five years, 12 months, you could kind of get a reading of how the, um, the trend is, but five years, you kind of see that it's pretty flat. Um, all this peaks here. I don't really know why June to August. I don't know, but other than that, you see the past two years, it's pretty flat. So that's how you know this is a, an evergreen product. The second product that we're talking about is a jacket. So let's look at jackets. And if you look at jackets, see this goes up and down. This is showing that there are more interests, more people searching this and more people buying this throughout different times of the year. So see, as it gets to winter, September, like fall to winter, it starts going up to December and then it drops back down during the springtime and the summertime. So these are seasonal products and a very seasonal product, um, Valentine's Day gift or Valentine's Day, Valentine's gift, Valentine's Day gift maybe. See, it's flat throughout the whole year and then from January to right after Valentine's Day, not even right after, before Valentine's Day, I think it says February 10th or so, 9th, it drops back down and it gets flat throughout the whole year. Then it goes back up and comes back down. So this is a very seasonal product. I would stay away from this unless you have so much capital that you could do every single holiday for your products. But um, that's that. And then there's two other things that I want to talk about, which is a fad and a trend. Uh, I know I spoke about this in earlier videos, but I thought I'd just recap that with you. So something like a fad, which is something you really don't want to get into. You want to get into trends, right? So a fad is a fidget spinner. So this was something that was really hot for like a few months and then it just died out. So you see the past five years. So it spiked up really high in 2017, April. And then it just went flat and died out. So these are products that you really want to stay away from. Something that I think is a trend, a lot of people think it's a fad. 
our mass because of COVID. So see, it's it's pretty much, this is not dead. It's not at the bottom. It's not flat line. It's a little up. So this is pretty evergreen, right? But when COVID hit, it hit a spike. And then it's not going all the way flat. It's kind of leveling out now. It's balancing out, even though it's a lot lower than this, than this like when COVID hit the peak, the high peak. It's pretty flattening out right now, and it's coming to become a trend. And I think this is going to be a trend moving forward. So these products like this is something that is okay to get into. How to forecast sales. So usually it takes about 80 days for you to produce, ship, and just start selling your product on Amazon. And when you look on how well Anisha is doing on, let's say, Helium 10, the sales show you the past 30 days of how well that product is doing. Maybe three months from now, those sales will be different. So you want to know, A, how many products you'd have to order to meet those sales three months from now. Also, you'd like to know how well you, you will do with sales three months from now or in general. So since you want to know that, we're going to dive deeper into how to forecast the sales for your potential product. I have a referral link for Helium 10, 50% off your first month. The link is in the description below. I do get a kickback from referrals but whether or not you you decide to use the referral for me, um, I really highly recommend Helium 10 in order for you to succeed in Amazon FBA. If you have any questions about the seasonality of your products, just let me know in the comment section below. I read all the comments, so I'll get back to you. Okay, so the first thing you want to do when you want to forecast your sales for your product, let's say your niche is baby toy. So what you want to do is go on Helium 10 X-Ray. And what this is going to do, what X-Ray does is compile the sales and the average reviews and everything of your competitors within this niche. And up here, it shows a search volume. So this is how many people are searching this product every single month, right? So what you want to do is click on this graph. What this graph shows is how many people are searching this product every single day and every single month of the year. So if you want to know how the product will do, and three months from now or even Christmas what you do is you see right now let's say your main competitor is selling 100 units right per day right now so let's say 30,000 search volume for May right and then you're gonna sell this let's say in November so there's 45,000 people searching this so you want to what you want to do is you want to account for that percentage increase of the people searching this product. So what you do is you take the 30,000 people searching this during May and divide it by the 45,000 people searching it in November. And what that's going to give you is probably 75% increase, right? So that's a 75% increase. So 100 units, if your competitor is selling 100 units today and in December, there's a 75% increase. So let's say that's 75 more units, right? So during November, your competitor will sell 175 units per day. And what you do is multiply that by 30 days, and that's how many units you will need to order for that month. So another thing that I like to do is I, look, I like to look at my direct competitor's sales graph. What this sales graph does, let's say this guy is your direct competitor. What this sales graph does is sh it shows you how many sales this product does every single day throughout the year. This is not 100% accurate, but it's pretty close for you to, to just have an estimate for your own product. So let's say that you want to launch your product in November, right? So what I do is I look at November and I just take the average number of November. So let's say it starts at 1,400 pieces and then at the end of November, it's around 1800 pieces, right? So I just take the average of that. So let's say that's 1600 pieces per day. And for you to know the sales for that month, I'll do 1600 times 30 days. And that's roughly like, I don't know, 48,000, 50,000 pieces for that month. And then that's how many units you would have to order for that month. And I use, I do that for three months in a row. And that's a pretty good gauge for you to know how well you would do. And if you want to know how much you would do in sales, you would do, uh, in November, 1,600 sales times 30, 30 days. That's like 50,000 50, units, right? And let's say you just sell it for $10,000. So $50,000 times 10, that's $500,000 in the month of November that you will make on this product. Of course, this niche is a really, really broad niche. And these 
these products are doing crazy amounts of sales every single month. They do $100,000 of sales. This is not what we're after, but this is just an example for you to know. So another way for you to know is by doing Google Trends. This gives you a really good understanding of how many units you would have to order and how your sales will do as well. So let's just say it's baby toy also, right? So like I said before, you wanna set this to five years, just so you know that it's downtrending or uptrending. You see it's kind of uptrending throughout the years. So that's why you wanna do it by five years. So let's say you wanna do it in November again, right? So right now is May. So let's just say is there's is 30 during May, right? This is just the interest over time. And in November, it goes up to, let's say it's at uh, 40. And at the end of November, it's at 85. So it's 60 again. So that's almost the same thing as, as the x-ray, right? So let's say it's 60 and it's 30. So it's double. Since it's double, let's say your direct competitor is selling 30 units per day right now during this month. And in November, it's gonna double that interest, right? So it'll be 60 units per day during November. And what you do is just order 60 times 30 days, and that's how many units have to order for November. And you do this for December and January and February, and it's pretty, pretty, pretty accurate. And this is just for your, for your initial order for your first production. Later on, when you have this product out for a whole year, you kind of get your own kind of trending graph, so you will know how many units to order for yourself. But for now, this is a really good way for you to estimate how many units to order for your product. And that's it. Those are all the ways that I use to forecast sales for my current and potential products. I really hope that you found this video helpful. And if you have any more questions, I have a Facebook group where we discuss everything Amazon FBA. So if you'd like to join, the link is in the description below. Also, I'd love to follow your Amazon FBA journey. So be sure to post your progress in the Facebook group. I just want to say thank you so much for watching my video. If you like this video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and share with all your friends and family. I really look forward to hearing about your journey, and I'll catch you real soon.